The next sutta is 8.4.36. Monks, there are these three bases of meritorious action. What three? The base founded on gifts, the base founded on virtue, and the base founded on making mind become. I'll just stop here to comment. Uh, these three bases of uh, blessings uh, or merit uh, is dana, sila, and bhavana. These are the three ways uh, we get married. Uh. Dana is making offerings uh, of charity. Sila is moral conduct. And Bhavana is development of the mind, which is meditation. Uh. Then the Buddha continued. Uh, Take the case, monks, of a man who, who only on a small scale creates the base of meritorious action founded on gifts. Only on a small scale creates the base of meritorious action founded on virtue and does not reach the base of meritorious action founded on making mind become or developing the mind. He on the breaking up of the body after death is reborn among men of ill luck. Take the case, monks, of the man who creates the basis of meritorious action founded on gifts and virtue to a medium degree and does not reach the base of making mind become a developing mind. He is reborn among men of good luck. Take the case of a man who creates the basis of meritorious action founded on gifts and virtue to a high degree and does not reach the base of making mind become. He is reborn among the, <coughs> among the company of the four royal devas. There the four royal devas, having created the basis of meritorious action founded on gifts and virtue to a very high degree, surpass the devas in their realm in ten ranges, that is to say, in divine life, beauty, happiness, pomp and power, in divine shapes, sounds, perfume, taste and touch. Or he is reborn among the devas of the thirty-three, there, <coughs> Saka, king of devas, because he created the two bases to a very high degree, surpasses the devas of that realm in the ten ranges. Or he is reborn among the Yama devas. There, Suyama, son of devas, for the same reason surpasses the devas of that realm in the ten ranges. Or he is reborn among the Tusita Devas, where Sun Tusita, son of Devas, surpasses all others. Or he is reborn among the Devas who delight in creating, where Suni Mita, son of Devas, surpasses all others. Take the case, monks, of a man who creates the base of meritorious action founded on gifts and virtue to a high degree and does not reach the base founded on making mind become. He, on the breaking up of the body after death, is reborn among the devas who have power over others' creations. There, Vasavatin, son of devas, having created the basis of meritorious action founded on gifts and virtue to a very high degree, surpasses the devas of that realm in ten ranges, that is to say, in divine life, beauty, happiness, pomp and power, in divine shapes, sounds, perfumes, tastes and touch. Monks, these are the three bases of meritorious action. See another sutta. This is a very interesting sutta. Firstly, you see eh, that if a person does not um, practice uh, charity eh, or precepts, eh, he does not get to be reborn as a as a man at all. Uh, he gets to be reborn in the woeful plains. So it's very important eh, if we don't want to be reborn in the woeful plains, eh? to remember that we have to at least practice eh? charity and uh, uh, precepts, eh? virtue, moral conduct. Eh? And a person who practices these two things on a small scale eh? gets to be reborn a man, but with very poor luck. That means he might be very poor and... Uh, among the lowest of men. But if a person practices charity eh, and moral conduct to a medium degree, he gets to reborn, to be reborn as a man eh, of good luck. But if a person practices uh, these two things eh, to a high degree, then he gets to be reborn uh, uh, as a deva. Uh, 
But in all these cases, yeah, the, that person has not practiced uh, bhavana, development of the mind. That means that person has not attained the jhanas. Lah. Because if a person has attained the jhanas, then he gets reborn into the form realm. Uh, these devas mentioned here are all the devas of the sensual or desire realm. Uh, the six heavens above the human realm. Eh? The first one is the four royal devas, and then the then the Tabatimsa heaven where Saka Deva Raja is the king. Then among the Yama devas, eh, there is mention here of Suyama as being the chief eh, among the Yama devas. I think nowhere else eh, you 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 find the mention of the chief of these. Uh, Deva realms eh, mentioned except here. And then among the Tusita heavens, eh, uh, Tusita Devas, eh, you have Sun Tusita is the chief among them. And then among the, uh, the Devas who delight in creating in the fifth heaven above us, eh, is Unimita, is the, is the Deva Raja there. <coughs> and then the sixth heaven ab- above us, eh, the, the highest heaven of the Desire Rem, uh, Vasavatin uh, is the chief there. We know uh, that Mara, uh, the, what is all, the, the person known also as Satan, uh, is in the sixth heaven above us. But he is not uh, the chief there. He is one of the chieftains, uh, but he is not the highest deva there. The highest deva mentioned here is Vasavatin. Uh. So the next sutta is 8.4.37. Monks, he gives clean things, what is choice, proper, at fitting times, and with care. He gives repeatedly, and giving calms his mind. After giving, he is glad. Monks, these are the eight gifts of a good man. That's the end of the sutta. So the... A good man uh, practices giving. Uh, first, he gives clean things. Clean things, not 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 in the sense that uh, they are. Uh, uh, what is meant here? They are not stolen. They are not stolen things. Uh, 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 what is choice? What is good? Uh, uh, he does not give uh, what is fit to be thrown away. Uh, uh, what is choice things? Uh, and proper proper things. Uh, fitting things to give at fitting times with care. He gives repeatedly, and giving calms his mind. And after giving, he is glad. These are the eight gifts of a good man. The next sutta is 8.4.38. Monks, when a worthy man is born into a family, it is for the good and benefit and happiness of many folk. It is for the good, happiness and benefit of his parents, of his wife and children, of his slaves, workmen and servants, of his friends and companions, of the ghosts of his ancestors, of the Raja, of the Devas, and of recluses and Brahmins. Monks, just as abundance of rain brings to perfection all crops for the good, benefit and happiness of many folk, even so, a worthy man is born into a family for the good, benefit and happiness of many folk. It's the end of the sutta. Uh, so it's stated here, if you have a virtuous person, a good person, he can benefit many, many people. And uh, it is mentioned here, even the ghosts of his ancestors uh, get the benefit of his uh, meritorious deeds, of his virtue. And we are at the chapter of the AIDS, the fourth book. Of the Yangutra Nikaya. Before I go to the suttas, I just like to mention I made two mistakes in pronunciation uh, the last time. The last talk uh, I mentioned, I read uh, imbecile. Actually, it should be imbecile. Imbecile is a fool, a stupid fellow. And earlier, several talks earlier, I pronounce the word Mahut. The spelling is M A H O U T. It's an elephant trainer. It should be pronounced Mahout. Mahout is an elephant trainer. So now I come to the Sutta 8.4.39. The Buddha said, 
monks. There are these eight yields in merit and goodness, the food of happiness, celestial, resulting in happiness, leading heavenward, which are conducive to what is pleasing, lovely, precious, beneficial, and to happiness. What eight? Herein monks, an Aryan disciple, has found refuge in the Buddha. This monks is the first yield in merit and goodness, the food of happiness, etc. Again, monks, an Aryan disciple, has found refuge in Dhamma. This is the second yield in merit and goodness. Again, monks, an Aryan disciple, has found refuge in the Sangha. This is the third yield in merit and goodness, the food of happiness, celestial resulting in happiness, leading heavenward, which conduces to what is pleasing, lovely, precious, beneficial, and to happiness. Monks, there are these five gifts, great gifts, recognized from the first, known for many a day, known by tradition, ancient and unconfounded. Not being confounded in the past, they have not become confounded, nor will they become confounded. They are not scorned by discerning recluse or Brahmins. What five? Herein monks, an Aryan disciple abandons taking life and abstains therefrom. Thus abstaining to unnumbered beings, he gives fearlessness, he gives non-hatred, he gives non-ill-will. And in giving fearlessness, non-hatred, non-ill-will, he becomes a partaker in unbounded fearlessness, enmity and goodwill. This monks is the first gift and scorned by discerning recluse and Brahmins. This monks is the fourth yield in merit and goodness, the food of happiness, etc. <coughs> Again, monks, an Aryan disciple abandons stealing and abandons all lustful evil ways, abandons lying, abandons the use of intoxicants which cause indolence and abstains therefrom. This monks is the fifth gift, a gift, a great gift, recognized from the first, known for many a day, known by tradition, ancient and unconfounded. Not being confounded in the past, it has not become confounded, nor will it become confounded. It is not scorned by discerning recluse or Brahmin. This monks is the eighth yield in merit and goodness, the food of happiness, celestial, resulting in happiness, leading heavenward, which conduces to what is pleasing, lovely, precious, beneficial, and to happiness. Monks, these are the eight yields in merit and goodness. That's the end of the sutta. So here the Buddha is saying uh, there are eight things uh, which are meritorious and results in uh, leading a person uh, to the heavens. And the first three are the three refuges, uh, taking refuge in the Buddha, Dhamma and Sangha, and that is basically means uh, a person understands the Dhamma. And after that, there are the five precepts. Uh. So if a person has these eight things, uh, the three refuges and the five precepts, uh, that person will have a lot of merit and a lot of blessings uh, that leads heavenwards, uh, leads to what is pleasing, lovely, precious, beneficial, and to happiness. Uh. The next sutta is 8.4.40. The Buddha said, uh, Monks, taking life when pursued, practiced, increased, brings one to hell, to an animal's womb, to the ghost realm. What is the very trifling result of taking life is the shortening of a man's life. Monks, stealing when pursued, brings one to hell to an animal's womb, to the ghost realm. The very trifling result is man's loss of wealth. Monks, fleshly lusts, when pursued, brings one to hell, to an animal's womb, to the ghost realm. The very trifling result is a man's rivalry and hatred. Monks, lying, when pursued, brings one to hell, to an animal's womb, to the ghost realm. The very trifling result is the slandering and false speaking of a man. Monks, 
Malicious tail bearing when pursued brings one to hell, to an animal's womb, to the ghost realm. The very trifling result is the breaking up of a man's friendship. Monks, harsh speech when pursued brings one to hell, to an animal's womb, to the ghost realm. The very trifling result is an unpleasing noise for a man. Monks, idle talk when pursued brings one to hell, to an animal's womb, to the ghost realm. The very trifling result is un unacceptable speech for a man. Monks, drinking strong drink when pursued Practice increased brings one to hell, to an animal's womb, to the ghost realm. What is a very trifling result of drinking strong drink is madness for a man. That's the end of the sutta. Here, normally uh, concerning the precepts, uh, we hear about the five precepts. But uh, we notice in the suttas uh, that sometimes the Buddha mentions seven precepts. And in this sutta, this mentioned the seven precepts plus the liquor precept, which makes it the eight precepts. And it seems from the suttas huh, that originally the Buddha made seven precepts. Uh, the first one is uh, to abstain from killing. Second, to abstain from taking what is not given. The third is to abstain from adultery. The fourth is to abstain from lying. And... Uh, Another three are also connected with verbal karma. Uh, the fifth is uh, abs abstention from malicious tail bearing. That means uh, not to, uh, when you hear A talking bad about B, uh, you don't uh, repeat uh, to B what A said uh, to make them quarrel and fight. Uh, uh, that is abstention from malicious tail bearing. And the uh, sixth one is harsh speech, abstention from harsh speech. The seventh is abstention from idle talk. Mm. And these were the original seven precepts. And, and they, uh, if you look at the Aryan Eightfold Path, uh, they are found there. And the fifth precept, the, the, the precept against drink, uh, was added later. And it is also not found in the Aryan Eightfold Path. Uh. So you notice in these uh, eight precepts, uh, if we break these eight precepts constantly, uh, uh, then uh, we'll be reborn into the ghost realm. But even if we don't make a habit of breaking these eight precepts, uh, uh, these precepts, uh, if we uh, if we do break them, uh, the first one, the result of killing, taking life. Uh, the trifling result eh, is the shortening of a man's life. Eh? You'll have short life because you make other beings' life short. The second one, stealing. Eh? The trifling result of stealing eh, is a man's loss of wealth. That means you will also, your wealth will also be stolen. Eh? And then adultery. Eh? The trifling result of adultery eh, results in rivalry and hatred eh, in the next life. Eh? And lying. Eh? And the result of lying, uh, the trifling result of lying uh, is slandering and the false speaking of that person in return. And then malicious tail bearing, uh, the result is breaking up of a man's friendship uh, because you break up other person's friendships. Uh, so you will also suffer the same result. Then harsh speech, uh, the result is noise. Uh, Idle talk, eh? the result is unacceptable speech eh? in the future. <clears throat> and uh, uh, taking liquor and intoxicants, eh? the trifling result of that eh? is madness eh? in the future life. Eh? So because of that, eh? we have to be careful eh? to keep these precepts eh? purely. The next sutta is 8.5.46. Once the Exalted One was dwelling at Kosambi in Gosita Park. Now the Venerable Anuruddha had gone apart during the noonday rest. And there, there came to him a host of lovely devis or fairies, who saluted and stood at one side. Thus standing, they addressed the Venerable One and said, Master Anuruddha, we are the fairies of lovely form. In three degrees we wield power and have dominion. We can assume in a moment any color we desire. 
We can produce in a moment any sound we desire. We can obtain in a moment any happiness we desire. We, Master Anuruddha, are the fairies of lovely form, and in these three degrees we have power and dominion. Then the Venerable Anuruddha thought, Oh, that these fairies would become all blue, with blue faces, blue garments, and blue finery. And those fairies, knowing his thoughts, became all blue, with blue faces, blue garments, and blue finery. Then he thought, Oh, that they would become all yellow, all red, all white, with white faces, white garments, and white finery. And at each thought, they became so. Now some of the fairies sang, some danced, and some clapped their hands. This is the five instruments of music, when well-tuned, well-played, and properly struck by the skilled, yield a sound at once sweet and charming, alluring, lovable and bewitching. Even so was the music of those fairies, all bedecked, at once sweet and charming, alluring, lovable and bewitching. But the Venerable Anuruddha kept his senses under control. Then thought the fairies, Master Anuruddha is not enjoying this, and immediately vanished. In the evening, the Venerable Anuruddha arose from solitude and came where the Exalted One was, and after saluting, he sat down at one side. So seated, he told the Exalted One all that had happened, adding, Lord, how many qualities have women who, on the breaking up of the body after death, are reborn among the fairies of lovely form? Eight qualities have women, Anruda, who after death are reborn among the fairies of lovely form. What eight? Herein, Anruda, the husband to whom her parents give her, out of love for her, seeking her good, in loving kindness and fond regard, she will get up before him, retire after him, be obedient to his wishes, <coughs> lovely in her ways and gentle in speech. Whosoever is honoured by her husband as mother, father, recluse or Brahmin, such she reverences, honours, esteems and respects. On their arrival she offers a seat and water. Whatever her husband's home industries, whether in wool cotton, or cotton, therein she is deft and nimble, gifted with an inquiring turn of mind into all such undertakings. She is able to arrange and carry them out. Of whatever her husband's household consists, slaves, messengers, or workfolk, she knows the work of each by what has been done. She knows their remissness by what has not been done. She knows the strength and the weakness of the sick. She divides the hard and soft food, each according to his share. When her husband brings home money, corn, silver, or gold, she keeps it secure by watch and ward. Of it she is no robber, thief, squanderer, wastrel. She is a lay disciple who has found refuge in the Buddha, in Dhamma and Sangha. She keeps her precepts, abstaining from taking life, from stealing, from fleshly lusts, from, from lying, from drinking strong drink, the, the cause of sloth. She is charitable, dwelling at home with heart purged of the stain of stinginess, given over to charity, open-handed, taking delight in giving, yoke made to asking. She finds joy in almsgiving. These Anuruddha are the eight qualities women have who after death are reborn among the fairies of lovely form. That's the end of the sutta. It's quite an interesting sutta because the venerable Anuruddha he went to the forest after taking his meal eh, at the middle of the day. Eh, he went into the forest. And in the forest, when a monk is alone, eh, sometimes these eh, spirits come to him because he is all alone. So these uh, devis, eh, fairies, eh, came to him eh, and showed uh, their ability eh, to change their colors and to play music, etc., and, but uh, Venerable Anuruddha kept his senses under control, so the fairies left. Uh, and then uh, the, when Venerable Anuruddha consulted the Buddha, the Buddha said uh, that a woman uh, who is born as this type of fairy uh, of lovely form, uh, she 
has eight qualities. Na? She serves her husband. Secondly, she honors her husband's parents and monks. Third, she is capable of managing the husband's business. The fourth, is capable in running the household. The fifth, she guards her husband's wealth. Six, she takes refuge in the Buddha, Dhamma and Sangha. The seventh, she keeps the five precepts. And the, number eight, she is generous or charitable. So that's the way to become a fairy of lovely form for a woman. The next sutta is 8.5.49. Once, well, while the exalted one dwelt at Savati in an eastern park, at the terraced house of Megara's mother, Visaka visited him, and the exalted one said to her, Endowed with four qualities, Visaka, women folk win power in this world. This world is in their grasp. With, with what for? Here in Visaka, a woman is capable at her work. She manages the servants. In her ways, she is lovely to her husband. She guards his wealth. And how Visaka is a woman capable at her work? Whatever her husband's home industries, whether in wool or cotton, therein she is deft and nimble, gifted with an inquiring turn of mind into all such undertakings. She is able to arrange and carry them out. In this way a woman is capable at her work. And how does she manage the servants? Whatever her husband's household consists of, slaves, messengers or workfolk, she knows the work of each by what has been done. She knows their remissness by what has not been done. She knows the strength and weakness of the sick. She divides the hard and soft food, each according to his share. In this way she manages the servants. And how is she lovely to, in her ways to her husband? What her husband reckons to be unlovely, that she would not commit for very life's sake. Thus she is lovely in her ways to her husband. And how does she guard his wealth? Whatever money, corn, silver or gold her husband brings home, she keeps it secure by watch and ward, and of it she is no robber, thief, squanderer or wastrel. In this way she guards his wealth. Endowed with these four qualities, Visaka, women folk win power in this world. This world is in their grasp. Endowed with four qualities, Visaka, women folk win power in the next world. The next world is in their grasp. With what for? Here in Visaka, a woman is accomplished in faith, virtue, charity and wisdom. And how is she accomplished in faith? She has faith and believes in the awakening of the Tathagata, thinking, of a truth, he is the exalted one, Arahan, Samasambuddha, endowed with knowledge and practice, welfarer, world knower, incomparable tamer of tameable men, teacher of devas and men, exalted one. Such is her faith. And how is she accomplished in virtue? She abstains from taking life, from stealing, from the lusts of the flesh, from lying and from drinking liquor, the cause of sloth. Such is her virtue. And how is she accomplished in charity? She dwells at home with heart purged of the stain of avarice, given over to charity, open-handed, delighting in giving, yoke made to asking. She finds joy in alms-giving. Such is her charity. And how is she accomplished in wisdom? She is wise and is endowed with wisdom into the way of the rise and fall of things, with Aryan penetration of the way to the utter destruction of dukkha or ill. Such is her wisdom. Endowed with these four qualities, Visaka, women folk, win power in the next world. The next world is in their grasp. That's the end of the sutta. So in this sutta we hear about four qualities eh, where women uh, win power in this world and four qualities where women win power in the next world. And the last one is more important, uh, to win power in the next world. And to, to get power in the next world, four things are important. Uh, to have faith in the Buddha, Dhamma and Sangha. To have virtue, that means to keep the precepts. To be charitable and to have wisdom. These are the four important things. Uh.